Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melvin Way. I'm the one who narrates all these videos. You can find me on Google or YouTube just by searching for my name. So this is some old footage from Sweet Wormwood. It was a previous plant series where I took this big woody root ball, cut away most of the woody roots and boiled whatever I could plus the soft roots for two hours to salvage that potting mix. I use potting mix to grow my plants and you know, after two hours, this is actually not the same footage from you know, when I actually boil the thing. It's just old footage, stock footage at this point. So removing the brown paper on these mango seeds is optional and I'll show you right after this one, um, that seed that's lying in the plate, how I first opened these. This is actually a prior attempt, again old footage that doesn't pertain to how I process the four seeds that I use for this series. So the way I process the four seeds, and I don't have footage of that shown in this video, is I just felt the seeds on the side, the seed coat rather, which is what I'm peeling away right now. You can see what's inside the seed with that brown paper on it. And I would just feel, find the thin area where the seed isn't and cut a corner away then stick my scissors inside and cut in both directions and then I do the prying that I'm showing here right now. So you can see what these look like. That's how they generally look like. I think these were two Peruvian mangoes. They were smaller. Oh yeah, search for me on Facebook too and subscribe to my channel please. Come back frequently for updates. So this is how they look and I actually took four Mexican mangoes. They're not that different. I guess they're a little bigger or it could be just due to the particular orchard they're from. So this is day zero. It's mid-July 2017 and I'm planting four seeds I cut out of the seed coats. Maybe they're a little bit different from Peruvian mangoes and how easy or hard they are to extract. You know, I was feeling around with gloves and they're all slippery and slimy and I'm, I was just like, you know what, it's easier just to use a levered cutting implement. I have a pair of scissors that's a little more heavy duty than regular scissors that people use to cut paper. So I'm going to plant these on their sides and they all look pale like this. I guess the Mexican mangoes are a little bit different. The brown paper is a little, you know, it's not as prominent and not as easy to peel away. It doesn't matter though. You can see that there, I think that's the root. So these have root and shoot systems that are much more developed, at least to my knowledge, than most plants that have tiny seeds. And in this case, I'm not peeling away that paper. So there's sort of an umbilical cord, you know, for that brown paper that attaches to the seed coat. You'll find out when you eat a bunch of mangoes and try to do what I just showed you. So I'm going to plant these four seeds like this, um, all next to each other on their side because I'm not an expert on the orientation. In either case, if you were to plant big seeds like this uh, vertically, and that's never how they would fall on the ground in nature anyway, except by a freak accident in very you know, wet terrain. So I have to move some of these roots aside. It's kind of a pain. The sweet worm wood has very tough woody roots and they're all networked. So I'm placing them on their sides because that way uh, the roots and the shoot tips can just go directly up and down. You know, they don't need to make a loop. Whereas if I planted them vertically, like I was talking about earlier, then that means one of the two would have a very easy time and the other would have to loop all the way around and that's a huge distance and wasted resources. You know, that's a few inches off the stem if you were to do that. So I cover this with about one centimeter or less of potting mix. I had previously failed at mango growing, uh, germination actually, I never even got to seedlings. And people were like, well, you can try various methods. You can have them in Ziploc bags, uh, use the wet paper towel method, keep them indoors for a while until you see long roots and then do a transplant, or you can try this, directly throw them in. So I opted for the latter because in my experience, mango roots are very fragile. Despite the giant size of these things, 
you'll find out if you try to do a transplant that it's quite easy to break them, especially if they're unhealthy, which I think mine were, just sitting in a container and they had turned all green and whatnot. So I actually have a video that uh, shows my failed mango germination attempt from earlier, but since you're watching the good stuff right now, you don't need to go see that unless you're just very intellectually curious about it. So I'm just sprinkling on more potting mix that's been steam sterilized as well in days past and it was just sitting in a bin on my balcony and I'm doing a light pat down. Don't make the mistake I made earlier which is bury them under several inches or centimeters of potting mix and really pack it down. So I'm going to fertilize a little bit with some miracle Grow. I labeled it vegetative growth because there are two kinds. There's one for normal foliage general growth. I think that contains a lot more nitrogen. And then there's one that's a flower boost that you use to get better flowering and more of them. So a fraction of a scoop is fine to get things started. I would water sparingly because there are no deep roots to feed at this point, obviously. And the more you water, the deeper down all of this stuff goes. So it's just basically crystallized versions of all the compounds and the, you know the macronutrients that the plant needs to grow that all plants need to grow so I'm watering with just a little bit of water and I just want to do it enough to the point where the fertilizer goes down you know maybe just a few centimeters and that way the seeds are just bathing in this rich nitrogen mixture and you know potassium and phosphorus and whatnot so I think these seeds, despite having giant sizes, have woefully inadequate nutrient stores in them. And I'll talk more about that later. So it's day 13, and I was working on my balcony on something else for just an hour or so. And I looked over again when I was done with that, and I saw this. It's a beautiful red shoot that reminds me of how my avocado series started. And if you get close and parallel to the ground, you can see bulges elsewhere. I'm not sure about that corner, but I think at least two out of three of the other ones are going to sprout at some point. And this one has actually the most advantageous position for receiving the maximal amount of afternoon sunlight. So at first I decided to water just mildly to keep the top layer, the top few centimeters, top few inches wet. Then I decided I should just do more fertilization so here are some you know target brand generic brand of vitamins generic of the men's health multivitamins that I normally eat you know those are almost twice as expensive so I'm gonna add a crushed multivitamin this is something I started doing in 2016 last year and I think the logic behind it is very sound um, you know nobody seems to have any objections to this and it's just a fun thing to do, although it does require washing a pair of pliers once in a while. So I have an extra very fancy pair of vice grip pliers that I'm using for this. It's a nickel and chromed out, so it shouldn't rust too bad. Although I think I should just get a simpler pair. Consider mortar and pestle, but I think that would be a bit of work as well. There's no way around it. I mean, vitamin pills are hard. You've got a soluble case. To keep everything inside which is mostly calcium carbonate but there's also a lot of other metals and you know trace minerals that animals need and you know plants need as well so I'll distribute these smaller chunks around to make sure all four seeds are covered when I water and then I'm going to spray some I'll sprinkle on some miracle grow vegetative growth again to add some more fertilizer because every time I water you know, logically, the stuff that's already dissolved, if it hasn't absorbed into all these wood chips and sphagnum peat moss particles in potting mix, then it's just going to drift and, um, you know, diffuse further down into the potting mix. So if I keep watering from the top without sprinkling on some new miracle growth, then all those nutrients will eventually diffuse or get washed down into the lower depths of this pot where they'll be wasted because they'll be essentially inaccessible for a very long time unless the roots grow really fast. So I'm just using a mirror here 
to illuminate very late in the day. It's close to dusk and the videography gets bad if it's all in shade. Although right now there's not that much to look at so it's not that big of a deal. And if you zoom in too close anyway on something very small then the colors tend to get oversaturated. You can't really see the green. Everything's almost white basically when you zoom in really close. So you don't have to dissolve all of the vitamin chunks. They'll dissolve over time. I just want to dissolve the miracle Grow crystals and get that nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus down there. So the other three seeds especially can access it. So yeah, I can replicate the videography of daytime for a small area like this using a mirror. So there's a little bit of green in there. I don't know if that's the rest of the seed. Uh, people sometimes say, you know, several shoots or plants can come out from one seed. So this is all new to me and I'll just wait and see what happens. And if the seed gets exposed, I'll pat it down with some potting mix. Thanks for watching.